Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to show you uh, the LTO Gen 2 overlay and how to use it. And I also wanted to kind of bundle this video with uh, switching over to GCC 10, which is uh, something that I did recently on my main machine. Right now we're in my VM. You can see if I go to like uh, PyTop, beep PyTop, right? You can see like a. Uh, it can't see my processor it's just like Skylake IBRS it's not like a, any kind of special VM but regardless so here in my VM I want to actually start with this like uh, I want to talk about this overlay and how to get it set up so it's pretty easy to use the way that I do it uh, differently than here they say to use layman overlays but the way I find works best is uh, to get uh, eselect repository which, if you don't already have it, you just have to emerge it. It's pretty simple, so I'm gonna go ahead and emerge that myself. And while we're at it, since, I guess while we let this compile, the reason to not use the layman over eselect repository is because layman repositories need to be manually synced while eselect repositories are synced all at once when you do an emerge sync or an eix sync or even a webr sync all together it it just kind of builds itself in like uh it builds itself in as if it was like another like gen2 repo so you know how you have like colon colon gen2 or you'd have like colon colon lto and colon colon mv and wherever you add here so i usually add my repositories through eselect repository but I mean, add it however you want. That's mostly besides the point. Also, we're gonna wanna get our Etsy portage make.conf open because we're gonna have to make some changes in here to actually do anything with the LTO overlay, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's let this finish. All right, so here we go. We finished emerging eSelect repository and now we're gonna have to use it. So it's pretty easy to use. Just do as eSelect repository list and we're the ones that we're going to list in this or the ones that we're looking for specifically in this case are the mv repository and the lto overlay repository so if you grep for mv we'll get number 256 is the mv repository so let's go ahead and enable that with eselect repository enable 256 and then we're gonna also grep for LTO overlay. And here it is 229. So let's go ahead and select both of those. And now we need to do an emerge sync. So let's do emerge sync MV. And then LTO overlay. So there we go. Now that we've emerge synced both of those, we've got them all set up. Now we need to emerge sysconfig ltoize. Now this is included in the, uh, what is it? They should say over here, in the MV repository, right? These are all from the MV repository. Or maybe they aren't actually. Now that I think about it, it could be both. But regardless, you need both MV and LTO as your uh, overlays I think you need the MV mostly for like the dependencies like over here oh and it gets Ccache for you how nice I guess now is a good time to mention that LTO the whole point of this is that these are like optimizations so this is supposedly supposed to make compiling faster and possibly make the programs that you compile faster but there's a little bit more to this video than just the LTO overlay so while we let this go we're gonna want to do another e-select but we're gonna do GCC and we basically want to select 10.2.0 if you don't have this you're gonna want to add package dot accept or no just accept keywords to AMD 64 and re-merge your system 
I'm pretty sure that GCC 10 is still in testing and that's how I'm doing this. You probably want this. It's going to be a pain to upgrade, but it's definitely worth it. So once you have this selected, good, leave it for now. We're going to come back to it. But it's important to note that we're going to be recompiling our entire system and there's going to be some errors along the way. So what errors do I mean? Actually, you know what? We can minimize this VM and pull it up on my actual hardware. If I, I'm just gonna do NVIM so I don't mess, uh, mess anything up. If you go to package.cflags, which is a folder that's gonna be added, there's an LTO workarounds.conf. And if you go to the bottom, the two packages that I had the most issue with was lib ltdl. And to fix that, you just have to add it here and add asterisk flags plus equal dash fno dash lto and the same thing applies for embed tls also while we're on the topic of errors if you get an, a neovim error while you're re-emerging it with gcc 10 or you're re-emerging it just like anyway and you're getting problems the way that i find fixes it is to go to package except there we go keywords and basically just uh, app editors neovim asterisk asterisk and if you can't compile x264 just add minus amd64 like the testing branch those are the little tips I have at this point it's probably done compiling yeah it is so we don't need this window open anymore now we need to go make some changes to our make.conf so let's go ahead and do as nvim whatever portage make.conf Oh, you know what? I actually have it open. That was right. We were going to edit some stuff. So we'll bring it back over. We need to make a few changes because we're not going to be editing any of the files that it made. We're only going to be editing ours. So first, n threads. I set this to auto. Set this to like whatever you want. The default is, tr is uh, 12, but I did not set 12. Anyways, now we want to source make.conf.lto. And we're going to move down to the common flags and we want to set dash m arch native and dash and not actually dash we're going to do curly brackets here and we're going to say c flags because the lto overlay is setting our c flags right go down to c flags all of these should be set to common flags your j can be whatever you want it's just your core count plus one all of this can stay the same but in your use flags you need to make sure that you have I'm gonna go to it right now PGO LTO and graphite these three are the important ones this is what makes this kind of all happen you probably will also want to add clang but that's whatever it doesn't that is kind of unrelated to this though I do highly recommend it now we're gonna make another section that we're actually gonna copy and paste from here because it'd be terrible to write it all out we're gonna add this line down here from the github CPU flags right we're gonna add those go ahead and save it and exit out of here and now we've finished the majority of uh, what we need to do so what now well we've selected GCC 10 we've added the uh, tilde AMD 64 and we've added the LTO overlay. So now we need to do a do as emerge dash AQVE at world. Now you're gonna wanna set aside a large chunk of time for this. It took my main computer nine hours to do this with 900 packages. So I guess just your, your mileage may vary. You're gonna wanna say, okay. And this dash, the E is basically saying, recompile everything. So you'll see it's going to go through a couple of these, but when it gets down to the uh, actual emerging, you'll see how many packages it re-emerges. The point is that we're, we're re-emerging everything with GCC 10 and we're emerging everything with the LTO optimization. So in my case, it's going to be almost, almost 600 packages. So you know what actually better before you do this, do as emerge depth clean, just depth clean your system right before you do this. It's going to get rid of all of these old packages that you don't need because you're on, not only are you on GCC 10, 
but you're also probably uh, removing packages throughout your system as you go and there's some dependencies that are left over so go ahead and do this just so you don't have to recompile a package you don't need it's gonna by the way it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be like removing old packages and packages that are orphaned so if you see something that you actually want down there like oh no Linux sources it's fine that's just an old version and then we're also going to want to do a merge dash a u q v d n our world. I tried combining this with recompiling everything, but in my experience, it really just gets kind of messy and it doesn't work out the way you want it to, and all that. So go ahead and emerge, re-emerge everything here. And when that's done, then you can do this. I'm actually going to just set this to like a sleep, like sleep. Uh, 600 just give it like 10 minutes to, no it's not take like 10 minutes like 300 and then compile so anyways that's just about all for this video I showed you how to change your GCC to 10 how to upgrade your entire system to the AMD 64 testing branch how to get the LTO overlay with its optimizations and how to recompile your entire system with GCC 10 and the LTO optimizations What's up anyways that's all from this video i'm gonna go ahead and compile and i'll see you guys later